to be a top producer for real. This video is sponsored by none other than Lead Heroes, you guys. Guys, Lead Heroes is such an innovative and unique company for the value proposition they bring to their customers and to agents all over the place. They got you covered when it comes to telemarketing leads. You guys know I'm a big fan of telemarketing leads if you have to buy leads. Telemarketing leads essentially could be Medicare supplement leads, turning 65 leads, under final expense leads, you guys. They just got you covered no matter what it is that you're looking for. And it's kind of interesting because it's such a unique value proposition. So many type of leads there's never any real intimate interaction with the customer, right? There's just, they're, they're essentially just somebody that filled out a card, right? They wrote on a postcard, which is like a direct mail lead. They type something out on a, on a landing page. It might not even be them. It could be just a family member. With Lead Hero leads and telemarketing leads, somebody actually has spoken to that person and you can actually hear the recording. So that way you know how the conversation went down. They also got you covered when it comes to virtual staffing, you guys. Nowadays, finding great people to work for your company is one of the most challenging things to do in our current um, economic situation in the country. You can actually work with Lead Heroes and plug in, in one of their highly trained and vetted staff members so that way they can help you out on a day-to-day -day basis. Just because you watch this video, you guys, Lead Heroes is going to give you 10% off any order you make on the website. Link to the site can be found down in the description, so go ahead and uh, check them out. All right, guys, let's talk about what are the characteristics of being a top producer in the insurance space, in the Medicare space, whatever space you're trying to be a top producer in. Um, I, I have credibility to speak on this because I've been a top producer every year for multiple insurance companies that I've ever been an agent, right? So I've been a top producer time and time and time and time again. Um, six different carriers, as a matter of fact, most of them multiple, multiple, multiple times over, okay? So I know what it takes to be a top producer. I've sold a lot of insurance in my career and one thing I'm going to do for you guys today is um, this could be essentially an hour to two hour long video, but I'm going to try to condense the information down into three basic principles that I believe that you need to know to be a top producer in the insurance industry. I think number one, and I, and I put this at number one because I do feel like it's the most important thing I'm going to talk to you about today, is adaptability, right? Adaptability. I feel like top producers... Um, they are very adaptable and they're open to essentially transitioning with the market in terms of what's going on in the marketing of things, what's going on in the industry. They're willing to kind of ad adapt and adjust to new basic principles. Now, that being said, top producers are not cookie cutter individuals. I've met top producers that are super stubborn, <laughs> but they're also usually like one man shows that, you know, don't really want to grow a company. They just, you know, they work out of their 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 house or something like that. Now they're very successful, right? They make four, five, six hundred grand a year as an individual producer. They have a big book of business. That's a great life. And if that's what they want and that's what you want, that's there's nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Um, for me, my I just want things a little differently, right? I want to grow a company. I want to grow. I want to innovate. I want to be um, as big as I as my company can possibly become, right? So cookie, um, there's no such thing as like a cookie cutter top producer. That's why when certain people say well, top producers do this, top producers do that. That's, that's, that's stupid. It's a stupid statement. And people that make those kind of statements, they don't really, it, it speaks to me that they don't know anything about top producers. They've never sold any extensive amount of insurance themselves. And they're, frankly, they're nobodies. Um, you can tell by how people talk in terms of what they actually know, if the information they know is actually sufficient and they've actually been around the block. I would say that... Um, when it comes to top producers, one thing you have to understand that the adaptability is a big part of the ones that go really, really, really far. Let me explain. I was having a conversation with an agent relatively recently. I actually have had this conversation a couple different times, but he was telling me, you know, you know, I, I, I was an agent before. Um, I went and worked in a call center, but I was an agent before. I did relatively well. Um, and I did it all. I did a lot of what I did on the back of direct mail and I was able to get five, six percent response rates. This might have been 10 years ago. Now I'd be lucky to get one percent response rate. And 
what that spoke to me as is that, you know, that, that, that what should have happened there is when the direct mail started to tinker off, doesn't mean that you stop doing direct mail, but you might adjust and adapt a little bit or try, and not saying that, that this, this, this individual didn't do that. Um, I actually know that he did. And, you know, just circumstances sometimes that make things difficult. But I think there's all, you, you have to try to find a new way because there always is a way when something stops working that you're accustomed to, to doing. So I think adaptability is number one, and that's very key. Number two, and I'd say that's a very, this is a very close number two. Top producers understand that there is nothing more important on a day-to-day -day basis than getting in front of new customers. They don't let themselves get bogged down with servicing existing customers or running drug comparisons or take your pick, right? Or, you know, putting to, you know, doing their accounting or whatever the case may be. Top producers understand the importance of their time. They understand that at a certain point, once you've basically made about 250 a year, 250 grand a year, I remember the first year I made $250,000 in a year, I started to realize that my time is more valuable than money to a certain extent. Because when you break it down, right, let's say you make $250,000 a year. This is a math equation, really, more than anything else. And let's say you're just breaking it down by somebody that works 40 hours a week. Now, I know a lot of you, if you're making $250,000 a year, you're probably working more than 40 hours a week. But let's just, for the sake of example, break it down in that capacity. That means that person is making an average of $130 an hour. So every hour you waste on tasks that aren't income producing activities that bring money into your business, if you're making $250,000 a year, you're essentially giving up $130 an hour. And that's the way that top producers look at things. That's essentially the way that I, a lot of them, from my experience, they, they actually do look at things and they actually calculate things in their head when they're actually guarding their time. That's why their time is so valuable to them. That's why they're so hard to touch and so hard to reach sometimes. They don't want you to waste their time because if you waste their time, they're essentially giving up money because of what they're able to bring into the business. They understand that getting in front of customers and getting in front of clients is the most important thing and they get really good at it, right? I, I, I always tell people selling is the easy part, right? Presenting is the easy part. Doing things compliantly in your presentation is the easy part. The hardest part for most people is getting in front of new customers. This is the truth. And if you can get in front of new customers and you can master the art form of doing that, no matter which way you do it, there's a million ways to get in front of customers. There's a million ways to market yourselves. There's leads, there's marketing yourself, there's running your own ads, there's, all, there's referrals. There's a million and one ways to get in front of new customers as an insurance agent. We've talked a lot on this channel about methods and strategies and things like that. I'm not going to go into that in this video, but they understand that it is insanely important that they spend a majority of their time, 80% of their time, getting in front of new customers and presenting to new, new customers and writing business and 20% of the time on everything else, not the other way around. Most insurance agents end up flipping it, right? They only spend 20% of their time getting in front of new customers. And sometimes getting in front of new customers is easier said than done, but you have to find out a multitude of different ways, a marketing plan that's diversified. And you put that together and you're gonna be in good shape. So that'd be number two. They understand that getting in front of new customers is what is needed and they value their time. Number three, they work hard. They work really, really hard. They don't do the business on a part-time basis. I've seen very, very few that make a significant income that don't work very hard at this and put in a lot of time. And, um, law of large numbers and the 10,000 hour rule is what I want to touch on here. The law of large numbers says that no matter what you're doing, if you do it enough, right, whether it be cold calling, which I think is really an inefficient way of doing business, they're calling leads, whatever the case might be. Um, you do something enough, something's going to give, right? You throw enough, you know, what against the wall, eventually something's going to stick, that kind of thing, right? Um, through, through persistence, you're going to see results. Also, you're going to get better at it through the experience and putting the time in itself. The 10,000 hour rule There's a great book. I quote it all the time on this channel called outliers by Malcolm Gladwell. And in that book outliers, it talks about, it studies top performers in the world, right? Whether it be in, in sports, in business, just all different kinds of people that have been top performers in sales. And there's, there's certain trends that they all have in common. 
One of which is to be a real expert in something, you have to have spent 10,000 hours doing it before you can truly be an expert. There's impo it's impossible because you don't have the experience to be an expert outside of that. That's why people that have sold insurance for six months, eight months, and then all of a sudden they're an expert, there's no way, they're fraudulent. They can't be an expert because they haven't put the time in. It's impossible by the 10,000 hour rule. Um, top producers are consistent. They show up every day. They don't make excuses. They do not allow themselves to miss days of work. You know, unless they are l missing a limb or they're dying or something like that. There's just something that they, that's out of their control. There's nothing they can do about it. But if they got the sniffles, they work, right? They find ways to work and show up day in and day out. The consistency is there. The consistency of their work ethic is what's going to put them over the top. Um, they work really hard. They're consistent. They put in long hours. And... Um, it's not sexy, it's not super um, popular for me to say something like that, but in order to have success in anything, you have to do things that other people aren't willing to do, and part of that is working hard. Doesn't mean you can't work smart, but you do have to work hard and put in the hours and pound the pavement a little bit if you wanna be successful. Anyway, guys, I just wanted to share with you these three simple tips um, and steps and characteristics that I feel all top producers have or a majority of top producers have, not that every top producer is exactly the same. Um, from my experience, this is what's been helpful to me to allow me to be a top producer. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts though. You feel like we missed anything, drop it in the comment section. If you have any questions or topics you'd like to see us talk about in future videos, also drop those down in the comment section. We wanna interact with you, we wanna, we wanna engage with you guys. Um, make sure to drop a like in this video if you found this video helpful. It helps the YouTube algorithm to help more people just like you who need to see this content find it easier. So I really greatly appreciate that. Uh, make sure to hit the subscribe button if you like our channel. Hit the notification bell. We try to put up five videos a week. Every week, we are typically putting up five videos each and every week on a consistent basis um, of free, actionable content. So anyway, until next time, guys, thanks so much for watching. Here's to your success and your abundance. Thanks, guys.